Let's take a look at a couple of theorems that involve this dimension stuff that we've been talking about. Let's say we've got a finite dimensional vector space V and then H is a subspace of that V. Now we take a linearly independent set in H. So it's in the subspace, which is of course in the larger space. As long as that set is linearly independent, it can be expanded out to create a basis for that subspace. Further, if you're a subspace of a finite dimensional vector space, the subspace has to be finite dimensional as well, and the dimension of H has to be less than or equal to the dimension of V. Rather than doing a formal proof of this theorem, I think it's more important to understand through an example what's going on. Let's say my space V is R3. And then my subspace H is going to be the subspace of V where the third component is zero. So I'm going to say it's a set of things of the form A, B, zero, such that A and B are in R. There's two ways to think about this. One is algebraically, the other is geometrically. Of course, drawing three space isn't easy, but I kind of am cheating. So what we have is in all of three space, that's my V, my subspace is just the XY plane. We're just going to say my subspace is everything down here, such that I never go up or down. Now, so let's take a subset of H. So for example, I can take the vector 2, 1, 0. Well, of course, any subset that isn't just the zero vector, if it only has one vector in it, is linearly independent. So that is a linearly independent set in H. And it's not a basis for all of H. There's certainly elements in the XY plane that aren't a multiple of this. Again, thinking geometrically, what we have is a single vector in the xy plane. The span of that is a line. I can scale that vector out in either direction, but I can't get off that. To get off that, I need another vector. So what I can kind of do, take a vector that's in the xy plane, but isn't a multiple of this. So for example, let's just keep it really easy. If I just add 1, 0, 0, if I add a vector like here, then I can expand that out and I can get anywhere in the XY plane. All of a sudden, this is still linearly independent. I've added to what I had and created a basis for that XY plane. Further, by creating that basis there, that means that my dimension here is 2. Of course, my dimension of V, I could use the standard basis 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. The dimension of V is 3, so the dimension of H is less than or equal to the dimension of V as well. And that's basically the way the proof goes as well. They throw in some extra special cases to deal with things like the subspace, which is the zero vector, and things like that. But for the most part, this is the idea behind the proof. 
that we can always add something in, remain linearly independent, until we end up spanning the entire space. That idea then leads us to a really, really important theorem. It's called the basis theorem. It says, let's say we've got a finite dimensional vector space, dimension P, and again, we're going to exclude the zero space, so the dimension is greater than or equal to one. Now, normally to be a basis, we have to check that it's both linearly independent and it spans the entire space. What the basis theorem says is that if you've got one for a finite dimensional space, you've got the other. Just by having exactly p vectors, having the right number of vectors as a basis, if it's linearly independent, it's automatically going to span the set. If it spans the set, it's automatically going to be linearly independent. Those two things, as long as you've got exactly p vectors, exactly a number of vectors equal to the space, linearly independence and spanning the space are exactly equivalent.